much. It's actually a great segue into Salesforce, it is. Jim. Because well, there's going to be some headlines today that say Salesforce trims full year revenue guidance. Oh, that's just, okay. you, don't, you don't like that. No, no. Okay, so the yen, uh, Mark was talking about, uh, Mark Benny, obviously, Salesforce. Yeah, um, yeah. He was talking about how when you go to the yen and you're a tour, uh, go to Japan with the yen and you're a tourist, you cannot believe how cheap it is. But when you're selling into uh, Japan, which is a very big market for them, the dollar went nuts versus the yen. You know, they're leaving the yen to be down. They're letting it go. And it, the, if you add back the currency, you see that he literally did raise numbers. But a lot of people don't know how to do that because it's, it's arithmetic, which is sometimes too hard for these guys who do the channel checks. And the cash flow here is amazing. It's got $14 billion in cash. I mean, maybe he's got to do something. He's now operating trying to get gross margins better. And David... This was a quarter where you have to believe Brett Taylor was not as involved, the co-CEO. Because he was focused so much on his role at Twitter in terms of uh, being chairman of the board and dealing with Elon Musk's various moods. Yeah. Um, Possible, yeah. Possible. And by the way, just so you know, Mark came from Capri in that interview on a yacht. Uh, He's going to have lunch with Bruno uh, Cuccinelli. And the Bruno Cuccinelli uh, shirt is is $500. Just a shirt. Just just you, you level, they, no level of detail is spared. No, you know, of course. You. And they use Salesforce now. Now, when I went there, they did not use Salesforce. But I did have a very embarrassing experience. I went to Milan Fashion Week, and he put a scarf on my wife and said, that is the most gorgeous thing. I will not reveal how much it costs, David, but it's 10 of your suits. <laughs> Oh, really? He shamed you about your and suits. you kind of had to get it at that me. point, right? Yes. So it just rolls downhill. Then he off to you and then you to me. Mark is selling his Formula One, one the CEO of Formula One, was formerly CEO of Lamborghini. I mean, everybody, everyone is using Salesforce. Yep. And by the way, there's a really interesting piece in the Wall Street Journal today saying that, that people are using Slack instead of LinkedIn. Instant job. Now, that's something that no one thought would happen when they bought Slack. Slack is more than a billion-dollar run rate. A lot of the analysts have been critical of the Slack acquisition, like the word MuleSoft. It's turning out really, really well. Well, to Jim's point about the guidance, they actually upped their yearly guidance on operating margin. And this is what Benioff told Jim about Forex. Take a listen. Our guidance is really impacted by foreign exchange. I think that that is what we could not see, that we have now had to consume about $600 million of foreign exchange changes since our investor day since we first gave guidance last November. And if you look at that deacceleration of, for example, the yen since March, I mean, I've never seen anything like it. So people are putting together CRM, NVIDIA, Palo Alto, Zscaler, as the argument that core enterprise is holding, is hanging in there. Uh, Look, I think I've been trying to come up with an acronym for those. I can't. I think Zscaler is the weakest of those. Palo Alto had an amazing, amazing quarter. And then against that was Workday wasn't as good as I, I would have thought. They had pushouts. So it's, it's a little um, catch as catch can. Now, there are some comments this morning, David. I don't know if you've been noticing. Tell me. But NVIDIA, that may have been a quarter where people are starting to say Bank of America likes Marvell, uh, NVIDIA, and AMD, all stocks that are owned by my travel trust. When we talk tomorrow at our conference call, club yep. call at 12 o'clock, we do this that NVIDIA may have been the one where people said, you know what, I really now factor in China, and I'm still going to, and I'm going to buy it anyway. Because they, were make, they make stuff in China, and they sell stuff in China. So I think that's very interesting, because that was the one that didn't get penalized for China. Uh, and China has finally started to open. Shanghai is now open. What do you think of it? I think we got to wait and see how long, how much the opening how big the opening is and, and what it actually means, but it's that, certainly moving in the right direction. How about the hit that HP takes? So we have a billion-dollar hit in Russia. Oh, okay, billion dollars. I mean, Russia, how do, you, how do you get a new PC in Russia? What do you do? Uh, FT's got a nice piece on how the economy there is, is really beginning to fray from within. Pe- yeah. People are beginning to feel it in terms of the lack of availability and uh, just the isolation from all sorts of technology is a lead example. Well, I mean, if they, I don't know if they do work from home. They do attack from home. I mean, what do they do there? Conscript from home. But it really is. This is the beginning of a fall behind. Because when you don't have the, basically anything from any of the, the chip companies, well, I just think that it's not just gamers. It's not just Call of Duty. It's like the real Call of Duty. And they're going to fall behind very quickly. And that, to me, is far bigger than what the EU is doing, because the EU is financing it with natural gas. Well, now, I, I think that's the worry. 
Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.